So everyone is losing their minds because Audacity has gotten really spooky recently. You might want to uninstall it if you're using it or at least do some of the mitigations that I'm going to cover in this video if you insist on continuing to use Audacity. So quick rundown on what's going on if you haven't heard. Audacity got acquired by this company called Muse a few months ago, and they did what everybody kind of knew that they were gonna do, which is use Audacity to start gathering data about people that are using the program. Because these days, data is just so valuable, and most corporations just see it as another revenue source, and a lot of their customers, I guess, just don't care. Uh, so the specific data that Audacity is going to start collecting when you use it is your OS version, IP hardware uh, information, uh, as well as data necessary for law enforcement, litigations, and authorities request, if any. Uh, and who knows what that is, right? Like that's pretty open-ended. Uh, and this is pretty spooky. That's coming from one of the better uh, open source audio editors and recorders. So what can you use instead? Well, in all honesty, you're probably going to be able to go on just using a fork of Audacity, okay? Because at the end of the day, it's still open source software, and this is a very popular piece of open source software. So anybody who is willing to just take the effort to remove the telemetry and then maintain a fork of Audacity is going to create that option for you. And this is already underway. So here on uh, Cookie Monster's GitHub, there is a fork of Audacity without any of the telemetry or crash reporting. Uh, so you could build this from source yourself or you could urge the people that are in charge of your GNU slash Linux distribution to just start pulling updates to Audacity from here instead of from the official source. Um, I'm also pretty sure that this is going to be included in things uh, like the AUR. It looks like it actually might be as uh, the name Audacity Git. I don't know if that's going to be the final name of the project. I suspect that it might end up being something similar to UnGoogle Chromium, which is of course the open source Chromium browser, but without all the weird Google stuff removed. Uh, so we've been here, you know, like this isn't anything new. Uh, maybe they'll call it an untelemetried audacity. Uh, well, that name kind of sucks. Hopefully they come up with something better than that. Um, now there's also options for mitigating the official audacity. Uh, if you don't want to trust somebody else's fork, although honestly, I see no reason not to trust Cookie Monster's fork. Um, so if you're building Audacity from source, you could simply not compile Audacity with telemetry support. As long as it remains open source, um, then that should be a possibility. And I suspect that the maintainers of distros that actually care about free open source software and not introducing their users to potential spyware are just going to do that. They'll compile the official program without telemetry or compile uh, Cookie Monster's fork. But even if you're given a binary of Audacity, you could just sandbox the program so that it doesn't have network access. Because at the end of the day, none of the legitimate uses of Audacity require any network access. But phoning home and sending device data and you know whatever else that this privacy policy is talking about when they're sending data that's necessary for law enforcement, uh, whatever that is, that can't be done without network access. Um, now, there is also a small, and I emphasize, very, very small possibility, because I generally don't have that much faith in the legal system, uh, that this could be undone because the updated privacy policy does have direct violations to the GNU uh, public license, the original software license that Audacity had. So the part that's a glaring violation is um, in section three minors. So the app we provide is not intended for individuals below the age of 13. If you're under 13 years old, please do not use the app. With the GPL, you can't create restrictions like this. You can't just deny the use of your app by anybody that's below a certain age. Um, now, I suspect the whole reason that they're even doing this is to comply with some kind of regulation that makes it illegal to spy on little kids, even though Microsoft, Apple, and TikTok, uh, to name a few companies, they've clearly either figured out a legal loophole or they just don't give a damn. 
Um, but like I said, I wouldn't even hold your breath for some judge to side on the GPL license and then tell Muse that they can't modify Audacity in this way, uh, or if they want to, they have to completely rewrite it because that's basically what the GPL means is that the uh, original code, like the GPL code, you can't then uh, modify it and then make it non-GPL. You would have to rewrite all of that from scratch. Like I said, I think it's much more likely that a technical solution is going to be what works and not a legal solution. Uh, another technical solution that I just thought of is you could simply not update Audacity. Um, so I did used to use Audacity uh, many, many years ago. In fact, I think that the first time I actually used it was when I was in school and I think I was under the age of 13. So that's just kind of funny that uh, this would have made whatever school project I was doing at the time illegal, I guess. Um, but with Audacity, I have looked at it and I don't really think there's too many new updates that have come through uh, in the years. So you could just simply use the latest version, like the latest official version before it has telemetry put in it, uh, and then just um, mark it in your package manager to not update that specific package. But I know that a lot of people are going to want to just stop using Audacity altogether and then try out alternative software. So personally, I use OBS when I do all of my recordings, uh, even the ones that are like audio only with a slideshow where I'm not really recording the screen. Um, well, so you technically can't do audio only in OBS, or at least you can't output as an MP3 or a WAV file. It's always gonna output as an MP4 uh, or FLV, something similar to that. But you can simply not include a video source and then you obviously don't have to set your bit rate for video really high or anything like that. You could just make sure that you have good audio settings and then you can output uh, sort of a pseudo audio file um, that's still very good quality without it being super big. That's pretty much my solution. Uh, since OBS does audio and video, I didn't see any reason to have a separate uh, program for just recording audio. And then of course the editing, if I did want to edit my audio, uh, I would just do if I'm also editing a video and that's available in KDN Live uh, and I think Blender and most other audio or most other video editors that are on Linux. Um, but maybe you don't want the overhead of using OBS. You just want something uh, that's really simple to record audio and maybe you uh, really want to output it as a WAV file or MP3 file directly. So you can actually do that with programs like FFmpeg and um, a record. So uh, with FFmpeg, I'll show you how you'll do that as a WAV file. So this is recording using FFmpeg to output.wav. So we have this output.wav and I'll play it. So this is recording using FFmpeg to output.wav. So there you go. It's scriptable and it's from the command line so you can look like elite hacker when you're doing it. Um, FFmpeg should be on most distros, but you might not have it and you know maybe you want to be super minimalist and not install another package. Uh, so a record is another option. This is most likely on your distro already. Uh, so the syntax will be a record. Uh, actually, yeah, let me do this. So we're just at the top of the screen. So a record and then the format is going to be CD quality, which I think is 24 bit um, and then some uh, really high Hertz number and then test.mp3. So we're going to record as an mp3 file. Uh, yeah, here we go. 44, 100 Hertz stereo recording. Uh, and then we can stop recording. Uh, yeah, here we go. 44, 100 Hertz stereo recording. Uh, and then we can so there you go, simple, easy, built-in options to record audio. Uh, you didn't even need to use Audacity. Now just make sure uh, with this, um, just like with Audacity and really any other audio editor that you're just recording uh, to with the right device. So like you can run a record and then come over to another terminal and run Pavu control and go over to recording and just make sure that uh, the right device shows up here. So like in my case, it's the Yeti stereo microphone. So there you go. Easy solutions to mitigate the spookiness of Audacity. 
Uh, yeah, sorry to say to any feds out there, but if you want to hear my audio, you're going to have to go on YouTube and suffer through my ads like everybody else.